You know this feeling you sometimes have of being right, of knowing that you're right, you can feel it. Well, I have some interesting news for you. It is just that. It's just a feeling. It's an emotion. And what has been proven now scientifically very precisely is that it has very little to do with whether you're right or you're wrong. And in a very complex world, the chances are that you're probably wrong. Interesting, isn't it? And it has far-reaching consequences. So in my previous blog post, we started exploring this model about above and below the line. And we looked a little bit about the disadvantages of being below the line. The sense that we get close to new ideas, close to other perspectives, that we are not able to learn when we are below the line, that essentially as soon as we are below the line, we are in a reactive, defensive position where it's more about our own survival, the survival of our ego, than anything else. That's the name of the game. So it's not the best place to be when we're trying to create something with other people, build relationships, solve problems, all the rest of it. In fact, it's a really silly place to be. So just digest this for a moment. When you have this feeling of being right, it is not the result of a careful thought process. It is just a feeling. And you then, when you get challenged around that feeling, try and argue and do some post-thought or post-feeling rationalization where you try and come up with arguments for why it is that you have this feeling. So if you're now with me on this, that we very easily shift into this position of knowing I know that this is right. I know that we should do it this way. Then it puts us below the line. And being below the line, we're suddenly closing down our ability to learn, our ability to take new perspectives, our ability to build relationships. All of that shuts down, and we are now in reactive defensive mode, defending a feeling that we have. And this is what Jennifer Carvey Gerber in her wonderful book, Mind Traps, calls exactly that, a mind trap. We fall into this trap of wanting to defend what we know in order to basically preserve our fragile egos. It's a terrifying thought, isn't it, once you really think about it? But that's reality. I'm going to add some show notes to this video in my blog post and, uh, and show you the uh, references to some of the documentation, both from uh, Jennifer Carver Gerber and a few others, Kahneman and others who have been uh, researching this. I find it absolutely fascinating. So caught in this trap, we are in a really toxic, unconstructive place. And we need to do something about that. We need to shift out of that mind trap. We need to shift ourselves up, back up, above the line. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by observing, first of all, this is, we're back to this notion of awareness, uh, by observing our own thought process. And as soon as you register yourself moving into this mode of being right, then all your alarm bells should go off and you should try and stop the process. And the way you can stop the process is by awakening your own curiosity. And so the easiest way to do this is to ask yourself the question, I wonder why they disagree with me. I wonder what it is they are thinking that makes them see this differently. I wonder 
what data they have or what other ideas they have that could make them see this completely differently than I see it. It's a magic word, this I wonder. Jennifer says you could ask yourself the key question, I wonder, how could I be wrong? Brilliant. Challenge your own knowing. And immediately when you do that, you shift yourself back up above the line. You awaken your curiosity, you awaken your ability to learn, and you start engaging with everybody that's around you, or the facts, or the data, or whatever it is, the environment, and you might, you never know, learn something really interesting that would have been completely lost. Something that would have been completely lost if you'd been stuck down there below the line defending your position. Closed to whatever else was going on. So, I had a fun experience of that the other day. I had asked my assistant to work on something on my website and when I had a look at what she was doing, she changed the basic color from on some certain elements. And my first reaction was, that's wrong. Why did you do that? And then I caught myself because I've been working on this. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have. And I said to myself, I wonder why she changed the color. Interesting. She's not the kind of person that would do that just because it's a whim. When I thought about it, she did it for a reason. I wonder what the reason was. And so at our next team meeting, on virtual team meeting we have, I asked her, instead of saying to her, you made a wrong decision on the coloring, it's not within the scope of what we've decided as the big boss I should do. I said to her, tell me something. What were you thinking when you changed the color? What was your thought process behind completely changing that color? And she had a really good explanation. And she said to me, it's an experiment. It's something I'm trying out. I want to see what happens if I do this this way and there's something else I want to change another way. And I want to see what happens. Wonderful. Great. Thank God I didn't pull her out because I would have taught her forever never to try and experiment with anything else again, but to stay within the box and within the rules. That would have been terrible. No progress ever again. We would just have been stuck with my old ideas. So, I hope this has at least inspired you to try and catch yourself being right and asking yourself, I wonder how I could be wrong. And next week, I'm going to tell you some more about what is actually going on below the line because some more interesting things going on there. Once we shift down like that, by wanting to be right. We get into a really interesting swamp where all sorts of other funny things happen. So we need to shift out of it. And I'll tell you more about that as well. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.